All right, so for um, looking at the objectives, we're going to look at the introduction to Jupyter Notebook, um, what Jupyter Notebook is. And then next, we'll look at um, um, running Jupyter Notebook on discovery, and also we'll look at how we can um, run it interactively and how we can assess Jupyter Notebook um, using um, the batch script, like the Sloan batch scripts and also how we could encrypt um, access routes. So, so what is Jupyter Notebook? Well, basically um, it is open source and it's an application that allows you to create and share documents um, that contain live code, you know, equations, visualizations and narrative texts. So basically the users of um, Jupyter Notebook um, include um, data cleaning and transformation, um, numerical simulation, statistical modeling, um, data visualizations, machine learning, and you know much more. So the purpose of um, Jupyter Notebook on Discovery is actually, you know, to allow users execute programs or execute their projects via the Jupyter Notebook interface on discovery. Because I'm pretty sure most students have been, you know, wanting to submit or execute their Python programs to Discovery's compute nodes via the Jupyter Notebook's web interface on their machines, you know, as well as getting access to the results or outputs of your code. So the essence of this workshop is to, you know, expose that possibility to all of you and make you see that, okay, you can actually um, submit your jobs on Discovery while assessing it through the Jupyter Notebooks web interface. Okay, so, um, so with this, you know, whenever you execute your jobs on Jupyter Notebook and you need to get the results or like the output or the visualizations, you can, you know, easily assess it through the web interface without having to export your data from um, the discoveries compute nodes. So that's way much, you know, easier. So um, there, there are three aspects to how you can achieve this. Um, the first part is to run it interactively using the SRAN command. So basically we have um, this right here. Um, the first thing you want to do is to execute the tmux command. So the tmux allows you to um, keep a session active. Because think about it, when you log into the Discovery's compute node and um, you stay for about, let's say, 30 minutes, I think it's 30 minutes, right? So um, your session gets killed after 30 minutes. So you would have to re log in again. <clears throat> so because we are going to use X, we are going to be accessing Jupyter Notebook interactively by using SRUN, we want to make sure that that session is you know is active you know is maintained without being killed by the discovery login node so that's why we want to use tmux for that to maintain that session so the tmux command you see right here is just to um enable you know that session you, you're just creating a new session basically and then the next thing you want to do is to load the dependency which is anaconda because um the anaconda is a dependency for jupyter notebook to run and then finally, um, we have our SRUN command um, with all these accompanying flags. So if you check the first flag here, we have the time, which is for two hours. So this means that whatever you're trying to do um, through Jupyter Notebook, um, it's going to last for two hours before the job gets killed or gets out of the queue. And then we have our end test, um, which is equal to one. And this end task actually depends on what you want to achieve. Like, do you do you have anything to run in parallel? You know, so, but the basics uh, by default is just going to be one task, which is um, equal to one CPU per task. So, uh, so here I've set like two CPUs per task just for um, example um, purposes. And then we have our memory per CPU, which is equal to four gig. Um, I think Jupyter Notebook actually requires um, 512 megabytes to run and also one CPU to run. So this is, this is okay. This 
uh, configuration is quite you know enough for it and then we have the jupyter um, notebook statements here which means that the application we are trying to run is the jupyter notebook application and then the no browser here means that you know we're trying to prevent the browser window from launching on the discovery compute node because it doesn't have the graphical interface enabled and then the ip flag here basically means that you know we're trying to set like set a default network so um we're trying to open up that range of ip addresses um, because your local machine could actually um, use either the local host ip address which is 127.0.0.1 or whatever ip address has been assessed um, assigned to your local machine so um so after that when when you when you submit that script um, you're going to get an output and the output contains you know how you can assess um jupyter notebook via your um your web browser so after submitting that script we got this um output on the standard console which says um that you can assess jupyter notebook through this url you know which is discovery c7 cluster so the next part of it you know um so in order to access uh, jupyter notebook from the web browser you need to also connect via you need to open up a new terminal and create a new ssh session so that ssh session actually creates the tunnel between um the discovery login node and the compute node where our job is currently running right so you need this line two in order to get that working and after that you could assess um, jupyter notebook via um, the local host interface and then the port number as well so i'll go ahead and demonstrate how that works and then we can move on to the second method so let me just check i don't have anything running Okay, so um, the first thing I'm going to do is to, I'm currently logged into Discovery. And then the next thing I want to do is to create a TMAX section because I'm trying to run, I'm trying to access Jupyter Notebook interactively, like using the SRUN command. So I need to create a TMAX um, session. So now i have tmux enabled and that's why i have the green background um, displaying at the bottom of my screen so the next thing i want to do right now is to load um the anaconda module uh, module which is a dependency for jupyter notebook so i'll do module load anaconda Okay, um, just to confirm that the module loaded, I'll do a module list. All right, so I have Anaconda loaded. And then the next thing I want to do is to run the S run command. Um, the first flag I'll pass to it is the end test. I'll set it to one and then I'm going to pass the time. So I want to run this job for two hours. And then next, um, I need to specify the number of CPUs per task. So I'm just going to give it CPUs per task equal to one. And then um, I need to specify the amount of memory I am trying to allocate per CPU. And for that, mem per CPU, um, let me just say, five gig 
So the next, um, what what application am I trying to run? You know, so I'm trying to run Jupyter Notebook. And then I need to specify that I don't need the browser window to be opened on this um, on this server because this server doesn't have any GUI enabled. So it's just gonna fail. And then the last command um, I would enter is the IP. So I am just enabling any IP within that range. I'm opening all the octets for the IP addresses. So when I hit enter, it queues my job. And then um, we have this output right here. So it says in order for you to access the notebook, you need to um, access one of these URLs, right? So, but the problem with this is if I try to access this now, it wouldn't work because, um, let's try. Okay. So I'm trying to open up my browser, okay. So this wouldn't work. And if I try to look out host as well, um, it wouldn't work either. So this is because I haven't um, created a tunnel down to the compute node. So in order to do that, I need to create a new terminal. I need to open up a new terminal. And then for this new terminal, um, I need to log in using the SSH command, but now I need to pass several parameters to it. So the first parameter I'm gonna pass is, sorry, so the first parameter I'm gonna pass is the N flag, which says um, we need to forward a specific port to um, the compute nodes. And then I'm gonna pass the L flag, which means that I'm trying to map a local port to the remote server's port. So uh, by default, it's gonna use port 8888, right? And then I'm trying to forward this local port to the remote um, server's port, and which is what we have right here. So that's the discovery C1, right? So that's the compute node where our job is currently running. So I'm gonna pick that, look, um, that host name and paste it here. And then I am mapping that port to port 888 of the compute node. And finally, I'm gonna use my username to log in via discovery.nmsu.edu, which is the login node. And then if I hit enter, it requests for my password. Okay. All right, okay, I think I got that wrong. Okay, so it has searched my password and nothing happens. So now we have a blocking feature. So the, the dash n flag I have here is actually um, restricting remote commands to this server. So that's why I have a blocking feature. It's currently logged in, but I can't do anything else. Okay, so if I go to my browser, Okay, and I assess local host port 8000. Oh, sorry, I think it's port 8888, let's see, port 8888, okay. All right, so now I have um, Jupyter Notebook on my, I'm able to assess Jupyter Notebook on my web browser but whatever I run here is definitely gonna execute on the compute nodes. And um, so the files I have listed here is similar to the files I have on my homepage. So if I go back to my homepage, um, let me try to log in from a different terminal this time. Okay. All 
right, so these files are ways are similar to the files I have listed on my home page um, on the discovery um, the Jupyter notebook. And then you could go ahead to um, create a new um, Jupyter notebook file. And also you could you could just execute your programs or you could import your own um, Jupyter notebook file and also execute it here. So let me just run a basic command real quick. Hello. Um, let's save. Go back. So this is a file I just created, right? And if I go back to my shell, I should see that file listed there, right? So this is the first method, like we are running this code interactively and if i check my current running job with the sq command um, you can see that's that's my job running right there okay so the most important thing after you know when you're done running your job and um you need to kill your your, your job what you have to do is you, you have to use the quit button, right? Instead of the logout button, because if you use the quit button, it kills the job, even if the time you specified your job hasn't elapsed, right? So the quit button does like enables that job to be killed, like totally. Um, the logout wouldn't kill the job. It just logs you out. It just kills the session, your browser session, and that's it. Um, so next we'll look at how we could use the batch script to achieve the same thing. And then finally, we'll look at how we could secure um, the entire access route in you know, assessing Jupyter Notebook. Um, so does anyone have any question before I go, uh, I go ahead to the second method? Okay. Um, all right, I'll assume no one has a question. So back to the slides. Um, I think we've covered this. All right, so the second method is how we can achieve the same thing, you know, through like the submission of a batch script. Right, and it's basically the same thing. The only difference is we are specifying, right now we are submitting the batch script instead of using the srun command to run it interactively. So um, if you take a look at the batch script, we have our resource request session, section um, where we specify the name of the job, the number of tasks, um, the CPUs per task, um, the memory per CPU, and the you know, estimated war time. And then, we also have um, the model purge command, which kind of get reads of, it, it gets rid of um, every module we have loaded just to make sure that we don't have any conflict when loading modules. And then after that, we load our module Anaconda. And then finally, we run the srun command um, with the no browser flag and the IP flag. So I have the sample script on my workspace. So I'm just, let me exit. So I'm going to cd into Jupyter notes ls. So I have script1.sh and script2.sh. So the script1.sh is what we're going to be looking at Right, same thing as what I have on the slides. And then let me delete the slurm output where. Okay. All right, so for the second method, you, you do not need the TMUX session because the, the only reason why we use the TMUX session was to make sure that, you know, even when discovery the discoveries login node logs us out 
um, we are still keeping that session. We can always go back to it and resume whatever we were doing before. But since you're running like an SBAT script, you're submitting an SBAT script, you don't need a TMAX um, at all. So I'll go ahead and submit the SBAT script, um, script one, the SH. Hello? Um, I have a question, hello? Okay, um, please ask. Uh, sorry, uh, I, I'm not able to join through Zoom, but I'm using my cell phone. So uh, I don't know how should I join Zoom meeting, you know, and see the, if you have any slides up there, I don't know what's going on. So I just have my cell phone. So I wasn't able to access the Zoom meeting through my email ID. Um, so do you have Zoom installed on your phone? No, no, I have Zoom in my computer too, but when I uh, uh, click the link that has been given from, that has been emailed to me for the workshop, it's asked me that I'm not authorized. So I'm not an NMSU student, so I don't have that account, so. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, yeah I, th I think that might be the problem, probably because you're not an S NMSU student. Yes. Um, yeah, but either ways, we we are currently recording the whole thing. So maybe after the, okay. the meet, yeah, after the workshop, we can send you links. We're, we're okay. going to send out links, you know, on how you can okay. access it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Okay. All right. Okay, so. Um, so we have our job running. Let me just make sure. So this is the recent job we submitted and it's currently running on Discovery C3, Compute Node 3, right? And um, if we if we check the output, um, we can see a new output here. And we need to, um, the reason why we need to assess the content of this output is in order for us to get the um, login information, we need to get a token, we need to get the um, IP address at which we can log in to. So I'm going to do a cat slam that out. And then it says in order to assess this, we need to um, use either of these URLs, right? So um, same port 888 by default. And then it has the token. So um, so again, if you try to assess this through the browser, it wouldn't work because we haven't created a tunnel that maps, that forwards the local ports to the remote port. And so let's do that right now. Let me go back to, I'm gonna copy this, paste. And then I'm gonna change this host name to discovery C3. All right, so now if I browse to localhost 88, although I didn't kill the first session, but it's still, it's still gonna work either way. And so let's say I log out and I need to log back in, right? So if I log out and go back to the login page, it asks me for password or token so whenever you prompt out for password or the token, all you need to do is just go to your Slurm output file, which is um, this file right here. And then you can see information about a token. So you just copy the, the, the token and then paste it um, in the password field in order for you to log in. And you should be logged back in. Oh, that didn't work. Let's try it again. So I think that the auto session is conflicting. Yeah, the auto session is conflicting. Let me go back. 
try this. All right. So yeah, so we are logged back in. And um, so that that's it for the second method. All we just did was to submit a batch script and to achieve the same thing. Right, but um, so let me kill let me kill this jobs, and then I'll kill this one too. Okay, and then I'll go back to. Let me exit from this Tmux. Um, kill my tunnel in. Check if I have other jobs running in. Okay, I have this one running. I'm just going to kill it here. Okay. And then kill this tunnel in going on here. And that's it. So So after the second method, this is this is what the architecture looks like, right? So from the client from your from your workstation, you know, through the internet to the login node, which is discovery.nmsc.edu. It's all encrypted. However, from the login node to the compute nodes where your jobs get submitted to, it's not encrypted. So if, if for some reason there is um, someone who's trying to attack um, or trying to sniff data, you know, it's just going to come from within the, within NMSU. It's going to come from within this network right here. So the next method I'm going to show you is how you can fully protect these access routes, you know, and access um, um, Jupyter Notebook via your browser, you know, with, with so much confidence that no one is going to sniff on whatever sensitive data you're trying to run, right? So, um, let me do a little bit of explanation right here. So we have the same command from before, like we have the same resource request um, as batch directives. We also have um, the module um, purge and the Anaconda dependency. And next right here, what we're doing is we are trying to choose a range of ports at which you can connect, um, you can connect from, right? So we're shuffling between port 6000 and port 9999. Right. And then right here, we're using the SSH command to forward, you know, the picked to forward this local ports that we picked on the compute node and also forward it to the login node. Right. So we are executing an SSH login here and we're also using um, the the end flag to, you know, block to restrict remote commands from being entered. So it's just gonna create this blocking feature, right? And then we have um, the R ports, let me see. So I think the F flag also forwards this port to, um, it maps whatever chosen port we have here to the local host of the compute node where your job is running and then to the ports um, for that compute node where your job is running through the discovery um, login node. And then finally, we're using the S run command to execute the Jupyter Notebook application and also specify the no browser thing to prevent, to prevent the browser window from opening up on the server and also um, the port number. And when we do this, we're going to have like a fully protected route, um, like I mentioned initially. So here we can see that between the login node and the compute nodes, right, we have like that encryption, that security going on there. So let's, let's see how this works live. Um, I'm going to go back to discovery. I'm going to see the to Jupyter Notebook directory. Um, I'm going to delete this file I have here real quick. 
and now um, let's see the contents of script 2.sh. Right, so basically uh, we have the same thing, you know, we have on the slides. And then I'm gonna submit this, this job, sbatch script 2.sh, okay. And if I do an SQ, um, so um, our job is currently running on discovery C1. And in order to assess it, we just have a little, you know, just a little difference. So this time we are specifying SSH, the end flag again, and then <clears throat> The L flag, which maps the local port to um, to the remote server. However, we still need to take a look at the output file, which is a slundered out, so we can see what port was generated. Right. So if I do that, it says. Um, copy and paste one of these URLs. So we have this running on port 8866. So that's the port that was generated and that's the port we have opened. So I'm gonna copy this entire thing because right now it doesn't specify the host name of the compute node, but rather it specifies um, the local host name, which is more like the, the loopback IP. So I'm gonna take this and then go back to my um, SSH command, right? And then I'm going to prefix the local port 8866. So this means that I'm trying to open port 8866 on my local machine. And then I'm going to map it to the local host um, of the remote server. And then map it to the port, this port, this port number of that remote server true discovery .nmsu.edu. Okay. The prompts for password. Okay, so um, now that we're sure everybody's working, there's no um, password prompt. Um, all I need to do is go to this um, local host and port number. Okay, so that's working. And then um, in order to get a token, I need to go back to the RP file of the job we submitted in order to get that token. So that's the password for assessing the Jupyter Notebook. So I'll copy that, go back and paste. And I'm back in. Okay, so, so basically this is the whole idea of, you know, how you could actually, you know, assess an application that has, you know, web enabled interfaces. Um, how you could assess it from your local machine, you know, while running your job on discovery, on the discovery cluster. And um, I think that wraps it up for, I think that wraps it up for the workshop, basically. Yeah. Um, so do you have any questions, any questions, any concerns? Um, was there anything difficult to understand? Is there anything I need to explain um, further? Um, are you having any challenges? Have you tried something like this before?
so at the same time, someone just asked, um, how many jobs can I submit at the same time? So the maximum number of jobs you have to submit is, I think it's 10, 10 jobs. That rule still applies, right? And for other policies, you can go to um, hpc.nmsu.edu slash policy to actually see, um, you know, those restrictions we have, you know, implemented so far. Yeah, but I think uh, you just have to, um, the maximum number of jobs per user is 10 jobs. And that's fair enough because we have a lot of people trying to use the cluster at the same time to submit jobs. So it's like a fair share. Um, any more questions? It's like everyone understood what's going on. All right, next question. Have you ever tried to install an Apache Spark cluster in which one master job and several slave jobs? I haven't tried that, but um, I think this is something we can always try and, you know, and see how it works because, you know, the whole idea of this whole workshop thing is to, you know, try, try so many things where, you know, try so many things where, you know, like try so many things, discover the possibilities and also make other students know about it, you know, show them that this is possible. So I haven't tried this yet, but we can set up a meeting and um, I can try to understand how that works. And then we can see how best we can, you know, achieve that, you know, on discovery, if that answers your question. You're welcome, Don. All right, I'm, I'm gonna stop recording for now.